Let's go to Poly Market. I've been wanting to cover this for a long time. And uh, of course, like everybody, I think who's online, they see these Poly Market odds. And in particular, lately, they have seen Trump just absolutely blow away Kamala in the Poly Market odds. And there's been a lot of discussion. I, What's going on here? Because if, if you look at a polling analysis, if you look at even the average of all of the models that are out there in terms of the reliable ones, the average, I checked yesterday, is 50%. So mm. if the average is there and the betting market is different, well, what do we know? Usually when you see a bit difference between that, somebody would think potentially have inside information. But then, uh, one of my friends pointed this out, there's no such thing as inside information in an election because it's like, what, do they know how undecided voters in Pennsylvania Can are gonna Can they tell vote? the future? Yeah, exactly. Can they <laughs> literally forecast the future? If not, then you don't have any inside information. So what is happening? Why is poly market, which is roughly a billion dollar market from the election, just on that question of who is gonna win, how did it become so different than other models? Let's put this on the screen. The Wall Street Journal did an investigation. It's actually super interesting. Effectively, what has happened is that four separate accounts, potentially all belonging to the same person, have bet some $30 million to that $30 million on the, Donald Trump winning the presidential election. And those four separate massive size bets were enough to push the average for the Trump question of whether he's gonna win up to some 60% and push Kamala's down to 40. Now, again, what's interesting too is that this actually happened after Elon Musk tweeted about poly market on October 6th. So we have one of those tweets. Can we put that on the screen, please? Uh, this seems to be one of the original ones where Trump was, uh, where Elon tweeted about this prediction market, where he said, Trump is now leading Kamala by 3% betting markets, more accurate than polls as actual money is on the line. That was the demarcation point. Prior to that, I've been tracking poly market almost every single day. It was roughly in line with the Nate Silver consensus, but it has now completely split. Again, you can take two different parts of that for what you want as to whether it is more predictive or not. If you ask me, and you know, we do this for a living, not that I guess it makes me all that much of an expert, but right now they have comma only at 36.2% chance of winning. That, in my opinion, is crazy, considering the amount of caveats and all the things we've had to drop on the show. Uh, that is like so bullish. They have her right now at 61% chance for Trump in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, in Wisconsin, 58% Trump. 59% Trump in Michigan. Each one of those blue wall states, totally mispriced, if you ask me. So yeah. if you're a line shopper out there, in the words of sports bettors, you may want to get in on the action. And I don't even think that Kamala is going to win. But if you were like, oh, I'll give you two to one odds that Kamala would win when she's got a 50-50 shot, anybody out there who bets sports for a living, yeah, this is a, that's usually, you should take that bet. And a lot of people made a ton of money doing exactly this, betting on Trump back in 2016. And when I show you guys the 2016 odds, you're going to be blown away from yeah. what the betting markets were. So just to recap, there's uh, four accounts that are about $30 million that are basically responsible for this yes. huge surge for Trump. And all of those accounts are behaving in a very similar fashion, raising the possibility that it's actually one individual who is gaming this market and pushing up the odds in favor of Trump. And it just so happens that it comes immediately after Elon Musk tweets about how accurate poly market is and how we should all be looking at poly market that to understand yeah. the real odds going on in this election. It also is a Peter Thiel back platform, worth noting that as well. But um, yeah, the the big question mark has been whether there was you know some organic something going on there. Like my initial thought was once Elon Musk tweeted that that there were a bunch of like Elon Musk bros who were like, oh, That's I got to get in on this. Too. But it looks like it was much more. Um, it, it was you know one whale or a number of them who decided they wanted to push up the odds. And um, this is significant also because we know that part of how uh, Trump last time justified his Stop the Steal lies was by claiming that Republicans had, you know, an insurmountable lead on election night and it was, you know, preposterous to imagine that they were going to lose. And so this also very much seems like, and, and Trump has leaned into this too, setting the expectation that Trump is 100% going to win. And so if he doesn't, there must have been something nefarious. So I think that's part of what's going on here. By the way, Elon didn't just promote this one, um, the poly market one time. He's tweeted like 20 different times about poly market. All of, uh, a bunch of the right-wing influencer accounts on Twitter have picked up this um, same approach. 
and have been pumping the poly market odds and you know claiming that this shows the the real truth of how likely Donald Trump is to win. And again, I, I think it's for some of these people, it's just about clout and whatever. But I think for Trump specifically and potentially for Elon Musk, it's also about trying to lay the groundwork to claim that the election is stolen if he ends up not winning. It's certainly possible. I mean, it's just one of those where everyone always likes to say like, oh, when money is on the line, it's more accurate. But okay, I don't watch sports. I have, I'm have i friends with a lot of people who are obsessed with sports betting. And the general consensus around sports and even the line, like what Vegas and all those come up with, they take all the information, they try and distill it into a number. That number, it's not bad. It can sometimes be accurate. But then how often are you watching a game where there's a spread that we think is quite reasonable and then something happens at the very last minute and everybody loses? So even though the team that you bet on might win, they may not cover the spread. Or how often does somebody get hurt or one thing goes a different way and then the entire thing shifts in a different direction. If you don't believe me, you know, for the first three weeks of the NFL season, I believe the public was on the wrong side of the bet for some 80%. Huh. So if you look at how good sports bettors actually are, separate conversation that I do want to save for later. Similarly, it's like exuberant. So whether it's a whale or it's dumb or it's just like Elon bros and dumb money, like you know, irrational exuberance is a tale as old as time in the stock market. And yeah. this idea that, oh, just because people are willing to put millions of dollars behind something that they may not be totally wrong is also completely inaccurate. So let's, for example, put C3 up on the screen. I had no idea about this, uh, actually. And it was raised in this Wall Street Journal piece. A single trader lost between four and seven million dollars exactly 12 years ago, betting on Mitt Romney to win the election. Four to seven million. All of the money from the single trader were placed exactly two weeks before the overall presidential election in 2012. They believed wholeheartedly there was a similar thing, mispriced trade. They thought he was totally they were watching uh, too much they, Fox News. They were news. watching way too much television, <laughs> watching Fox News, and they were out there and bet four to seven million that they ended up losing that Mitt Romney would win the presidential election. Similarly, in 2016, can we put this up there, please? Because this is crazy. These are the live betting odds from RCP average that were of the prediction markets at the time. On the day of the presidential election, November 7, 2016, Donald Trump had a 13% chance of winning according to the betting markets <laughs> at that time. 13%, Clinton at 88. And How's actually- that for the wisdom of the markets? Yes, exactly. This is what I'm trying to, to really like underscore for everybody. And in fact, one of the things that Nate talks about in his book is that there are a ton of gamblers who love Nate Silver, and they were looking at Nate Silver's odds on the day of the election, he gave Donald Trump a 28% chance of winning or something like that. And they were like, hey, 28% chance, 12% that the market's giving me, mispriced line. They didn't even think Trump was gonna win. They put $1,000 or something like that. They got like nine to one odds in terms of the payout that they received. He said to this day, whenever he goes out to eat, people still buy him dinner because they've won so much money betting on Donald Trump huh. to win the election that's because funny. of Nate Silver's forecast. So that's my point, is that if you look at these markets and especially where they are right now, now, on top of with crypto, I mean, look, I'm pro crypto and all that, but with poly market, we have very little insight into what this is, into even, uh, it, we have very little insight into like who these traders are, for example, who are moving these big bets. They're not probably as used to uh, having to deal with like literal massive whales, this is a never before seen situation with such a large marketplace on the issue of the presidential election. So if you just think that this is a correct and accurate reflection, I mean, again, we don't even have that in the most well-regulated market in our stock market, yeah. as opposed to what's going on on poly market. I am yeah. also highly suspicious that this is actually one individual, because not only are they behaving in a very similar fashion, they also were all funded by deposits from Kraken, a US-based crypto exchange. Right. So it is highly suspicious that this is all one individual who is trying to create a portrait of you know this being uh, in the bag for Donald Trump, and you know using that to to create a, a, a sense a psychological sense of imminent victory on the Trump side, and um, Poly Market themselves said that they are actually investigating what is going on here too. So um, even to your point, Sagar, even mm -hmm. if it wasn't for this you know one or four individuals putting in thirty million dollars to get this to look the way that they want it to look, even if it was just a you know a bunch of people wisdom of the crowd or whatever, you still should not put a lot of 
stock in these um, betting odds because people can vary, and markets can very, very easily be wrong. But, you know, part of, of what I was getting at and why, you know, I do think that this is um, potentially uh, on the part of some sort of ominous and nefarious is um, we also have people like Marjorie Taylor Greene now floating new Dominion voter conspiracies, claiming that she saw a Facebook post that said that some Dominion voting machine <laughs> was flipping votes. Elon Musk has also gotten in on this uh, Dominion voting, like, you know, alleging that they there could be some fraud afoot with where there are Dominion voting um, machines. We can go ahead. Let's go ahead and play for you Marjorie Taylor Greene's comments. That's C6, guys. They went up to one of the election workers and they said, here's the problem. Um, the, the machine switched it and the printed my printed ballot, I did not vote for these people. So they had to start over and they went through it several times and it kept on making the same error, kept on switching the votes. So, um, you know, once again, back to the Dominion voting machines. These people also never learn because Dominion has sued a bunch of the news networks for all they were worth when they were <laughs> spreading lies about the, the operations of their machines. We can put C5, excuse me, up on the screen with the, the Elon Musk details here. He said at one of these uh, town halls he did in Pennsylvania, he says, when you have mail-in ballots and no proof of citizenship, it's almost impossible to prove cheating. Statistically, there are some very strange things that happen that are statistically incredibly unlikely. There's also this question of, say, the Dominion voting machines. It is weird that I think they were used in Philadelphia and Maricopa County, Arizona, but not in a lot of other places. Doesn't that seem like a heck of a coincidence? He added, the last thing I would do is trust a computer program. And apparently, sorry, he was not even correct about mm -hmm. how and where and when the Dominion voting machines were being used here. Oh, I'm just like, okay, here we go again. Mm -hmm. You really want to do exactly this? Right. Uh, even for Elon, you know, <laughs> at least Elon is rich. He can defend himself in court and decide he can hire a lawyer. Marjorie and the rest of these other folks who want to toy with this stuff, look how it worked out for everybody in the state of Georgia who's under indictment, ends up pleading guilty, giving up their law license, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawyers. So if they want to do that again, go for it. Yeah. And see how it works out for you. Well, you remember what, what Trump said at McDonald's when he got asked? about it. He said, you know, something very was like, he didn't say Dominion voting yeah, machines, but he was like, election, yeah. if it's fair, I'll accept the results. Right. And by the way, you know, the predictions say that I have a 93% chance of winning. Yeah. So of course we're going to win. <laughs> so that's how all of this plays into, you know, what they have planned post-election day. And it's not just this, they've already filed a range of lawsuits in battleground states to try to challenge, you know, the, the voters' eligibility. Um, they've stacked a lot of the election boards with people who are like pro-Trump MAGA loyalists. And then there's this sort of like psyop to create an impression that Trump is a sure thing. And listen, he may well win on his own, in which case all of this ends up being moot. But that's why the poly market piece fits in together with what Elon is saying about Dominion, Marjorie Taylor Greene is saying about Dominion, Trump is saying about whether or not he'll accept the election results, all these lawsuits being filed, and all of the state boards of elections being stocked with um, these mega loyalists. So, yeah, on that latter part, troubling. again, just because the price was wrong. I mean, imagine a company saying we shouldn't have gone bankrupt because our stock price was X, Y, and Z before that. Yeah. Like, well, the market was saying that it was going to work. It's like, okay, but that doesn't predict the actual results, bub, you know? Yeah. What can we say? It's ridiculous. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Very true. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad-free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show. Help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.